When it comes to YouTube, my absolutely favorite content usually are videos just plainly discussing uh, movies and TV shows. And you know, I don't even really work in that field, and yet I learned so many things about how movies and TV shows are getting created just plainly by watching these videos. I learned about stuff like, I don't know, the Dutch angle, active and passive protagonists, um, the hero's journey, the 180 degree rule, and this kind of changed how I watch movies. I feel like um, I enjoy it more, I, I, I see more details, I understand better what the creators are trying to communicate. But the thing is, I am personally a game developer, so today I'm here to talk about uh, the question if there are similar concepts and techniques out there to learn how games are getting created, to learn how uh, to become a better game developer. And well, of course, I guess we have to admit that film studies are still a vastly broader field than, for example, game studies. But that doesn't mean that games don't have anything to show for themselves. I would argue that there are still tons of interesting things to learn from game developers and scholars. So for today, let's start with one of the most basic and fundamental concepts, the magic circle. Now, of course, the first question is, what is exactly that magic circle? And most importantly, what is so magical about it? The magic circle is a quite old concept. It originally was developed by historian Johann Heisinger. He noticed that our everyday lives are governed by certain rules. Sometimes they are pretty obvious, um, like let's say there are written rules, for example, like laws. But sometimes these rules are also unwritten and they completely change based on where you are, with whom and when. So to understand this a little bit better, let's have a look at a famous quote from his book Homo Ludens. The arena, the card table, the magic circle, the temple, the stage, the screen, the tennis court, the court of justice, etc. are all in form and function playgrounds, that is, forbidden spots, isolated, hedged round, hallowed, within which special rules obtain. All are temporary worlds within the ordinary world, dedicated to the performance of an act apart. Okay, so this is quite a long quote. Um, and it's not especially complicated, but let's still make uh, an example. And let's take one that he actually used himself, um, the Court of Justice. The Court of Justice is a good example because it's pretty obvious that there are special rules which apply within the Court of Justice. Um, these rules govern where people sit, for example, who they uh, can speak to, when they can speak and in what manner, and most importantly, who has which power. In the court, the judge has the power to rule over other people's lives. It is part of the rule set of the court, but you know, as soon as she leaves court, if she is going home, for example, riding the bus, uh, luckily, she does not have the power anymore to rule over people's life. So we can see that there are very distinct boundaries to uh, the rule set of the court. And that basically is the magic circle. It's a specific space. And when people are entering that space, they are subjected to a specific set of rules. Heisinger also notes that the magic circle usually has these very uh, distinct boundaries, as he writes in another quote. 
All play moves and has its being within a playground marked off beforehand either materially or ideally, deliberately or as a matter of course. As we have talked about the Court of Justice before, uh, these boundaries can be a spatial thing, uh, like a building or a room, like in the courtroom. It can even be something more abstract, like uh, lines on the ground, for example, for a football field. But uh, the boundaries can also be imagined. Uh, so, for example, when someone asks you to play a game of rock, paper, scissors, and you reply with yes, uh, you're basically stepping into the magic circle of rock, paper, scissors just with your verbal agreement. In either way, it can be said that entering the magic circle seems to be an action, uh, either by literally stepping into something physically, like uh, a building or a room, or agreeing verbally, like with our example with rock, paper, scissors. So, since we are talking about video games, uh, entering the magic circle can also be another action, like for example starting the game application or picking up a controller. Speaking of games, it wasn't Heisinger who made the magic circle popular in terms of video games. That also would have been a little bit hard because uh, Homo Ludens was released in 1938. Rather, it was Katie Salen and Eric Zimmerman who popularized the concept in game development circles. And I would like to look at two specific aspects of their work on the magic circle. So, before we talked about how the magic circle can be confined by physical borders, uh, such as the lines of a football field. But time is just as important. Salen and Zimmerman argue that a game has always a beginning, a middle and a quantifiable outcome at the end, and of course that does, the magic circle in games is clearly defined by time too. I would argue that that is not just the case for video games. The rules of football do apply on the football field during the football match. But if on, let's say, maybe it's a warm summer afternoon, uh, the sun is shining and some people want to enjoy the sun, so they lie down on the football field. Um, do the rules of football apply to them too? Well, of course not. I mean, of course, <laughs> at least I hope they will not do it during a football match. So, um, before and after the football match, regardless of if you are on the football field or not, the rules of football do not apply to you. Similarly, if uh, we take our example with the Court of Justice, and let's say the court session is over and housekeeping is cleaning the courtroom in the evening, um, of course the rules of the court session do not apply to them either. Okay, so far so good, but until now we only talked about, you know, very clear boundaries such as uh, spatial boundaries of uh, a football field or the temporal bounds of a court session. Um, but we could also ask the question if these borders always have to be this rigid and clear. Salen and Zimmerman argue that this is not the case. And this time, let's take a quote from their book, Rules of Play. A child approaching a doll, for example, can slowly and gradually enter a play relationship with the doll. The child might look at the doll from across the room and shoot it a playful glance. Later, the child might pick it up and hold it, then put it down and leave it for a time. The child might carelessly drag the doll around the room, sometimes talking to it and acknowledging it, and at other times completely forgetting that it is there. Now, at this point it's important to mention that there is another concept which distinguishes between toy and game, 
and one could very well argue that the child playing with the doll rather falls under the category of toy, but let's say that's a topic for another day. Still, the notion that the boundaries of the magic circle can be rigid but blurred as well is very interesting. To make yet another example, um, let's take something different this time, uh, for example, the dance floor. If you look at the dance floor, in many cases, a dance floor has sort of a gradiential shift towards its center. It's usually in the center where people are dancing uh, the wildest, forgetting their surroundings and getting lost in the music and the movements of their bodies. And at the edge of the dance floor, there oftentimes uh, is a bar because people like dancing and drinks. So at the bar, uh, people are standing in line and getting drinks. And in between the two things, between the dance floor and the bar, sometimes we can see all different stages of, uh, let's say at the bar, people are standing there talking, uh, maybe some people are, you know, watching other people dance on the dance floor. Maybe if you go a little bit further, there might be some people shyly bobbing their head or even, you know, dancing a little bit. And the closer you're getting to this, uh, the center of the dance floor, the uh, more people are dancing. So. I would argue that the bar is not the same magic circle as the dance floor. After all, they have like very different rule sets. And yet there is a gradual transition between the two. And if you would mix them like um, completely, a person who would dance like a maniac right at the bar would seem very much out of place and even disturbing, as would a, a, a line of people forming through the middle of the dance floor to, you know, stand in line and get drinks. So to summarize, different magic circles, different set of rules, but spatially very close and with overlapping borders. So this um, is basically the, the description of the magic circle. We talked about uh, spatial boundaries of the magic circle. We uh, talked about temporal borders of the magic circle. And we also touched a little bit upon um, how rigid that uh, border usually is or can be. But anyways, when we started the video, we talked about the question how, what does that mean for games? And, you know, so far we only talked about things like uh, football and courtrooms and dolls and dance floors. So in the second part of the video, let's answer the question of what does the magic circle mean for you and your game? or if you are not creating games yourselves, um, what does it mean for the games you uh, are playing at the moment? Hi, it's me, Future Tabea. I'm just here to tell you that I originally planned to do the whole video on the Magic Circle in, well, just one long video. Um, but after capturing everything, I noticed that it indeed got quite long, it's almost 30 minutes. And that's why I decided that it might be better to split it into two parts. Uh, so the part that we just had now about uh, the theory of the magic circle, and then a second part where we, as promised, will talk about how to use the magic circle in video games. But don't worry, I will definitely link the second part in the description and maybe even like somewhere here. And um, thank you so much for staying with me until now and hopefully see you in the next video. Bye!